Alright, so as we currently have a dot in promo running, let's take uh, this particular domain as the example. So here is where you can set the promo pricing that you wish to offer to your customers and sub resellers. To avail of the promo pricing you wish to offer, uh, which is $1.89, you have to set your customer and sub reseller pricing less than or equal to the $1.89. This feature also enables you as you can see below to set up announcements on the control panel for both your customers and sub resellers. So now taking a quick look at the set RC1 price and the set RC2 price. What we at Reseller Club believe is of course that in the domain names as it's <laughs> widely proven throughout the true profits are in the numbers game. So what RC1 and RC2 prices stand for is that they are sort of barriers. What your RC2 pri RC1 price is, is in the example we have just entered random figures but it's 2.74 so basically your direct sub reseller will need to set his pricing less than 2.74 in order to avail of your promo price and similarly how RC2 would work is that his sub resellers that is to say your sub resellers sub resellers will need to set at least 6.59 as their price or lower than that in order to avail of a promo price which they are receiving from him. I hope you're getting how this goes. So what this barrier cost, what this would actually um, ensure is that the pricing advantage is being passed down to the end customer. Irrespective of how long the chain is getting, we like to ensure that the end customer is again getting an advantage, getting the pricing advantage that we are trying to offer to our resellers over here. Another thing that I would like to add over here is that when you set pricing for a particular product and you also set specific, pri specific pricing for a sub reseller, the system will automatically apply the lowest price applicable for that customer or sub reseller. So for an example, uh, you expect a lot of domains coming in from a customer and to that end, you have offered him a 10 cent discount per domain. So what you can do and at this very same time, you have a promo running which offers a 15 cent discount. So you need not go into the, cust into the customer's account and then modify his specific pricing. The system will automatically pick the lower pricing and then apply it. So that's again how one of the automated features and how you have to do less manual work over there. So that will take care of the promo pricing. I would like to add one more pricing related feature here which is used to activate your sub reseller accounts. So for that once again we need to go under settings and sub reseller sign up. All right. So here in uh, here is where you can choose whether you'd like to manually or automatically activate the sub reseller accounts under you and of course the funds at which the account should be activated. So it's pretty simple what the three options in front of you First is direct activation, that is any sub reseller who signs up under you will be automatically activated. Second is the manual activation wherein you choose to manually go ahead and activate their account. Third is how our system sort of functions is activation on total receipts. Is that when the system registers a, a particular amount of total receipts that your sub reseller has touched, so that would basically mean that he has deposited those uh, relevant amount of funds with you in your account that is when their account would get activated. So that's how it works. It's pretty simple. So now that uh, we, are ready, we are ready with the products and services that you wish to sell and their pricing, you now want to make product specific settings. And I'll start with the payment collection settings. So for that, once again, we need to go under settings, finance and billing, and payment collection settings. So obviously we need to select a product category. So let's take digital certificates and go ahead with that. So this particular feature is designed to avoid any sort of bad debts. So as you can see on your screen, you have three options over here, actually four, but three are what is uh, the first three are what I I'm going to be talking about first. So if the invoice, uh, so the first setting of course on your screen is the order cancellation dates. If the invoice which is generated is not paid for a certain number of days, 
then the invoice and the order are automatically cancelled by the system. The second is the order suspension date. That is, if the invoice is not paid for in a certain number of days after the order has been activated, then the order is automatically suspended. When an order is suspended, the customer may not use it. The order will, of course, get reactivated once the customer makes his payment. And the last setting over here is the order deletion date. So if the invoice is not paid for in a certain number of days after the order is activated, so post its suspension, once it touches again, once the relevant number of days which you specify, the order is automatically deleted. You can also, from this very same screen, send periodical reminders to your customers and sub-resellers that fall into any of the above categories to remind them to pay. So these features basically act as your collections manager and help you avoid any sort of bad debt. One more finance related setting that I would like to talk about which are actually very crucial to your business are the payment gateway settings and the tax rules. So for that once again we need to go under the settings tab, finance and billing and let's take a look at the payment gateways first. So we have list add. So here is uh, for the purposes of the presentation we've already integrated one. So there are a total of nine different payment gateways which are already integrated with our system. You could choose any of these pre-integrated payment gateways or add one of your own. So let's just go to add payment gateway and see how this would work. And here we are. So as I mentioned, here are the already the pre-integrated payment gateways and the last option is to add any other payment gateway of your choice. You just need to click on it, fill out the requisite information and that would be about it. The payment gateway will be available to all your customers and resellers to make any transactions. Now, coming to configuration of your tax rules. So once again, we need to go to settings, finance and billings and to configure tax rules. So, uh, as I mentioned before, if you wish to cater to different countries, you, you need to, of course, abide by their tax rules. And this is how you can configure them into the system. So, as, as I mentioned, we went to finance and billing and configure tax rules, and here we are. I've already added a few for the purposes of this presentation. This is, once again, just an example to show you how this could be done. So, if you go to add new tax rule, And you'll need to go ahead and add the required information. So you need to select the product category, the percentage of tax that you wish to levy, the tax label, that would be the name, the country and the state for which it's applicable, even the time zone, and the start date and the end date. So that's, that's about it. And of course, if you would so require, you can go ahead and add the reseller ID of someone specific that you wish to exempt from the tax rules. And that's it. It's pretty simple. Similarly, as we just did, you can add various different tax rules. As I, you can add uh, how many ever that you wish to do so. A few other product related settings are related specifically to domain registrations. So for those, we need to go under settings, products, domain registration, and who is format. This is where you can customize the way your Whois information is displayed whenever a customer does a Whois lookup for a domain which is registered by you. You have your web-based, you have your web-based Whois format, and of course your port 43 Whois format available. Now, now that we took care of this uh, particular feature, one of the most important features regarding domain registration are the default name servers info. So once again for that, we need to go under settings products, domain registration, and default names of information.